Okay, now we're going to explore chapter 4 where we're going to talk about chemical composition in cells. Now, this chapter is quite interesting because we're going to look at substances that we um, eat on our daily basis and how it affects our life. So, first of all, we're going to talk about water. Now, water is the most important molecule among all of this because for water, you can survive up to 3 days without water. But for the other substance, you can go up to two weeks. You can go up to two weeks without carbohydrate. You can go with up to two weeks without protein and fats. DNA is a different topic because we are not eating DNA. DNA is just part of the cell. So we're going to talk about this much later. All right. So for water, what happened is, is that in a journal of biochemistry, they discovered that the water molecule, they compose of up to 60% of our body mass where our lung itself is about 80% water. Our brain and our heart is about 70% water. So why is water so important in our body? Is because water has their own special characteristic. Even the water molecule itself, which is consisting of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen, they create polarity because oxygen is a negatively charged ion and hydrogen is a positively charged ion. So this nature of water molecule causes them to have polarity. And due to this polarity, it allowed the molecule to create hydrogen bonding and this make water a universal solvent. So why is it important for water to be a universal solvent? It's because we need some of our ions to be in its soluble form. If your ion is insoluble, for example, let's say our calcium ion is insoluble inside our blood. This might cause diseases such as atherosclerosis, where they're going to form a thickened layer on the blood vessel and cause us to have heart diseases. However, because of um, the condition of water itself, allowing for ions to dissolve within it, this makes the blood to flow without any restriction and we can dissolve much more substance as well as to carry out the biochemical process. Water is also needed for our plants where they will carry out a process known as cohesion adhesion to transport the water up the shoots. So we have our companion cells to help that. So for the plants, the companion cells are within the vascular bundle where adhesion is the water molecule binding itself to the um, structure of our companion cell. And cohesion is when the water molecule are binding to themselves because of this polarity they are able to jump between the companion cell and other water molecule. This ability allow water to be transported up from the roots to the shoot. And why is water so important in plant? Because in photosynthesis, water is needed along with carbon dioxide. to form our glucose and oxygen gas. 
That is why the plant require water in its daily life and for us we need it as a solvent. Other than that, water is also needed because it prevents us from dehydration. And water is also used in our daily life where water act as the medium of transport. For example, we have plasma. And all this nature of water make it the perfect solvent for our body. Next, let's go to our DNA. A DNA Subunit is called ribonucleic acid. A ribonucleic acid consists of three main components, which is our phosphate, the pentose sugar. and a nitrogenous base. Now, this nitrogenous base are either one of the four. Either we have adenosine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. So what happened for this nitrogenous base, when you look at some of the movies where they show a DNA sequence of A, T, T, C, C, A, A, G, A, G. So this is basically these four components that make up our ribonucleic acid. They are interchanged where when we look at our DNA structure, Let's say here I have adenosine A and here I have a cytosine. Now, the pair, we read the uh, DNA from 5 to 3 and the opposite side, we read it from 3 to 5. So what happens is the adenosine is always paired with thymine. And the cytosine will always be paired with guanine. So the pairing of DNA is always AT and CG. So this is what we call as complementary strand. The main strand and the complementary strand. Why is, there, why is it important that we have a complementary strand? We've already discovered in chapter 2 where the... Um, Ribon ri nucleolus produces mRNA that will travel to your ribosome. So this ribonucleic acid from the DNA is broken apart. The DNA, they are unwind, they are open up. And the complementary strands are the one that our um, enzyme will read through to produce the strand of mRNA. And next, we'll look at carbohydrate. Next, we're going to talk about carbohydrates. So when we talk about our carbohydrates, they are made up of three major elements, which is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So that's why for carbohydrate, most of them have this structure. Right? So this is carbohydrate. So our carbohydrate are separated into three main groups. We have the monosaccharides, which is also known as simple sugars. We have our disaccharide, 